crew have quietened down endlessly when, when we came on the set due to the nature of swearing and us being so young and angelic. Guys, you were terrific on that last take. Give me the same thing again, okay? Chris was always keen to make sure we were children first and then uh, and then professionals. For me, it was very important. I wanted them to have a sense of fun in being there. I'm number two. There are all these notes going round. Then we just put them in a pen lid and we throw them across the room. And so I get the note out and read what it said. You could see them acquiring knowledge uh, as they went. Good one. Good one, Dan. Go, Tom. Alfonso was no longer treating us like kids. He was very into the, you know, the, the serious side of things. And I think it's definitely helped us all grow up as actors uh, as well as people. Maybe turn back to, like, to your pulse. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He's great with young people. And... Yeah, yeah that's kind of strange. I mean, it's very fortunate, because in the fourth film, I think it was, there was a scene for Draco where he gets turned into the, the ferret. And the original thing was to, there was a naked scene for Draco where when he comes back for me to run off naked through the woods with loads of extras there and I was like this is back in the day when I was even more of a pubescent child than I am now so it wasn't one of my highlights and very fortunately before that they said you know what we're going to cut that because it could be a little racy for the younger younger audience Perfect. Is that a but to them I was like really I don't mind you know I'll do it in the back of my mind I was like thank god I haven't got to do that this is very, very embarrassing. Right, show me again. We were at a period of kind of teenage angst with these people. And it was... How do you feel about it getting older? <laughs> I, 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 it's fantastic when I consider the alternative. <laughs> <laughs> one of the great things this place teaches you and teaches you to communicate. Um, like Daniel was brilliant for that because there's no one, on the, no one on this earth that he can speak to and make them feel immediately comfortable. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> All that stuff is great, and like meeting people and fans and like, all that is lovely. And anyone who says that it's not is po-faced and a bit miserable. I remember just doing some stuff for a, uh, a Harry Potter tour, and uh, these people came over to speak to Oliver and I. And a little little girl it was about six or seven, and she was really like she was shy but still chatting. And as soon as she saw Tom, she couldn't go and see Tom because she was like, "That's Malfoy. He's evil. I can't speak to him." I really, really go all out and say, look, hi, you know, I'm friendly in real life, I promise, I won't hurt you, yada yada, but they just like the films too much, they're, they're, they're far too convinced I'm an evil so-and-so, and that's the end of it, really.